But how are you integrating into the marketing organization? How are you, in your publication, figuring out ways to offer value in and integrate and keep your editorial mission clean, as, as it were, but also being able to integrate yourselves into the marketing organization? Whitney, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, um, it's really hard. I'll start, yeah. <laughs> I'll start with that. Um, I think you know the, the way we've approached it is a lot of communication. So telling people that content marketing and this publication is part of a journey, is part of our marketing mission. So if we can say that thought leadership builds engagement, um, builds our brand, and then makes it easier for our audience financial advisors to make the decision further down that they want to use our funds, then that's how we're helping you know, achieve our business objectives. I like one of the things um, that you and Will talk about, your colleague at, at, at Capital Group, and you talk about this, how, how you won over sales. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sales is an interesting one for us because they're, they're, we actually call them our, um, our distribution because that's how we, before we started marketing fairly recently, um, that's how we got our materials out. Our sales force goes to all of our financial advisors' offices and distributes you know, our outlook for 2018 or whatever the piece may be. And um, we actually, Will has a great relationship because he's been at Capital for I think 18 years. He has a great relationship with all of our sales force, so he would call these guys on a regular basis and tell them that we were launching Capital Ideas and here's some material that they can use and it's such a great experience because you know, you can pull up this one chart and use it in, an, in, a, in a conversation with um, an advisor. And that has been really great because we get a feedback loop from our sales force and from our advisors who say, this is awesome. We love having this website that we can go to and quickly find what we're looking for. Right. And that kind of you know, anecdotal, while it's not you know, quantitative, it is a great thing to take up to our senior leadership and marketing and say, look, this is, there's value here. How about you guys at Intel? I mean, I you know I know you've the Intel has gone through, you know, a pivot is probably the wrong word for a company the size of Intel, but it's really sort of the the turning tectonic shift of a of an organization that's really moving into more tr classic traditional B two B marketing. You know, I, I made a joke and and um, you know the Intel inside ingredient brand thing has been a you know that's been Intel's go to market <laughs> strategy for a long time, and now moving more into that sort of account-based marketing, classic. How have you seen that shift in the way that you're looking at editorial and the way that you're integrating into marketing? Yeah, I, mean, I can speak to kind of maybe the data piece so you can talk about the editorial. Um, in terms of, yeah, like providing value to the sales team or folks that are closer to actually selling product, because uh, we're typically the first touch point, so we're trying to figure out basically, you know, take a pretty complex topic like blockchain, quantum computing, AI, and then intersect that with a, with a real use case. Like, you know, what, you know, artificial intelligence makes a lot more sense when you, you know, read a story about how it's um, helping detect skin cancer through a phone, uh, through a, uh, an iPhone app. So we try to highlight, you know, some interesting use cases and then really focus on the people um, rather than the products. Um, so really our, our asset is really the audience. Um, you know, our, you know the, it's the Joe Polizzi's kind of quote of, you know, content's not really the asset, it's actually the audience to get from it. That's my that's, quote, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Okay, there Jeez. we go. <laughs> Your share. Yeah. 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 You told us to call you Joe yeah. yesterday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so in terms of, yeah, like, uh, how to provide value to the org at large or the sales team um, or folks that are doing kind of that, that um, closer to the customer trying to like sell itself. We're not creating content per se for them. Right? We're not gonna be creating like a white paper or managing a webinar. Uh, but what we can do is provide some really valuable data to those teams. Um, so in terms of, you know, cause we create a lot of volume of content. We're a true always on, um, you know, kind of play. We're not a campaign team. So, you know, we like last year, for instance, you know, we um, are focused on artificial intelligence. We created over like 30 pieces of content over the year. So we can go to teams that are selling products and say, here's what audiences are consuming. Here's, you know, everything from, you know, here's our top articles to here's some attributes of those articles um, that, that are interesting. Um, and then of course, when we share it on social and share it through things like Flipboard, right? Like really leverage the ecosystem out there. Of course you get anecdotal feedback from, um, from users. I mean, there's obviously a lot of trolls out there, but you know, we, we pay attention to some of the questions that are coming through from the content um, and try to pass those, those, those those things to the, the sales team. But, and of course, I think we're gonna get to this, um, it's really hard to figure out 
how to basically hook up the pipes of your tech stack to your site so your data flows in the right way. Um, and honestly, I don't think for us it's a problem of like the data's there. It's just a matter of like analysis and interpretation of that. Um, so it's kind of, we refer to it, unfortunately, like our, I think our status is more of a kind of leaky bucket uh, where we're, we're putting a lot of great data into the bucket, but it's oftentimes not being leveraged. And so we're trying to figure out how to kind of plug those holes and make sure the data goes to the right places. I definitely want to come back so, to that. Yeah, because yeah. that's a great, I mean, it's, it's, what, it's, it's, a, it's one of the challenges that so many of us have, which right. is, you know, and, and, and I think what I hear you saying, which is, is, is really interesting, which is that your top of the funnel, if you will, your editorial mission can almost be the wrapper of the thought leadership content yep. idea, right? You know, so right. it's like, it's almost marketing the marketing, right? It's yeah. like, you know, so if I'm gonna create a thought leadership white piece or white paper or an infographic that's gonna be meant for lead generation, well, that's gonna live over here in demand generation, right. mid funnel, if you will, right. and you're going to create content that is aligned with that, that helps drive maybe traffic to it or yeah. provides a wrapper for it. And the interesting thing here is, and we'll get to this part, is how do we start to align that technology and the data that we're gleaning from? How much contribution are we actually providing to the download of that wonderful white paper right. or, or those kinds of things? Yep. You touched a little on that yesterday in yep. your talk, that sort of segmentation of content that, um, you know, forgive my uh, ignorance in, in, in not remembering, but it's heart, hands and, and head. Uh -huh. um, and sort of that sort of segmentation, th that sounds very similar to what Luke and, and Deb are doing. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I think what what we found is useful um, to your to your original question around you know how do we how do we communicate our value to the organization um, and get people on board. Um, it it is it's back to kind of what Meg said. It's it's communication, and as we work with these different teams, um, you know, understanding what their what their what their goals are, what they're trying to do, yeah. and figuring out how we can help them with that. Um, in the context of what we're doing, which I would, you know, um, everything's a service today, so thought leadership is a service or something like that. Right. But, um, you know, we, we go to the sales team and we say, hey, you know, um, we know that you guys are trying to strike up conversations in, um, in, in this sector. And here's a bunch of great content that will allow you to either start conversations or um, proof points for conversations you may have started with leads. Um, so that's a way that we'll go and share the value of what we're doing with sales. And they go, oh yeah, they're totally into it. So now they go to Redshift all the time. And in fact, they've signed up for our newsletter so that they're the first to get yeah. um, content when we publish it. Right. Um, and uh, you know, when we go to demand gen, it's a lot of the same kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I showed that graph yesterday where you talk about the function of what we're trying to do is build brand affinity. It's like, make people fall in love with the brand and like what this company is all about, personify the brand through our, through big ideas and thought leadership. Yep. Um, and they're, they're really thinking about drive demand, right? And so we talk to them about sort of the intersection there. So in some cases, we'll get together with our partners who are in the vertical who are driving a line of business and we'll brainstorm with them on a, a story because a lot of stories come directly from them, right? And, and they'll say, hey, we're going to do an article on these um, on, on this, these guys that have started this cool robotics company, for example, and um, we're gonna do a video about how they're using our product Fusion 360 to do this, and we'll go, okay, this is cool. We'll do a story about these guys as well, but we'll do one about these guys and how neat they are and how they're really an, an interesting example of where the industry's going. So we're kind of like up-leveling the story a little yeah. bit, and then we will publish the story and we'll generate audiences and then we'll allow them to retarget those audiences yep. so that somebody, they've read the story about these guys and how neat they are, want to learn more about how they're doing what they're doing. Yep. So we're actually connecting the dots and helping them, you know, back to what you were saying, which is help them, you know, go out and generate audiences. So audience generation, sort of, if, if, if that were to replace the top of the funnel, where bottom of the funnel's, you know, demand generation. Sure. Yep. We, we kind of try to think of it that way. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's, let's shift that topic and, and talk a little bit about tech. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a lot about tech yesterday, and of course, mm -hmm. this, uh, this conference you know, speaks to a lot of the technology and the underpinnings of the infrastructure um, for what we're trying to, to build here. Where, where are you guys in the technology conversation? You know, Kathy McKnight yesterday talked about sort of that idea of getting really integrated with your technology teams, mm -hmm. um, really working you know, backwards and forwards with them. We heard this idea of being brave yesterday. We talked about the, you know, the, 
the, the, the wonderful universe of scalable content mm -hmm. out there from Cruise. When you're doing technology and thinking about what powers the publication that you have, where, how does that sit and what are some of the technologies that you're, that, that you're really getting a lot of benefit? I'll, Dustin, I'm going to start with you and then work backwards this sure. way. Sure. Um, so in terms of running our content operation, um, you know, it's interesting. Across the company, there are a bunch of different tools being used today. And, it's, oh. and, and that's something I'm actually looking at trying to tackle now, right? There are teams on Trello, teams on Asana, teams on a variety of different, you know, project management tools. And also teams that are storing assets in a bunch of different places as well. Yeah. Uh, so we have a dam, but then people are storing stuff on Box, and it, it's all over the place. So that's messy, and that's something that I'm looking at for the broader company. For Redshift specifically, we're using Asana yeah. for all of our sort of content operation. Um, and uh, you know, the, the, the publication itself sits on a WordPress, yeah. which is different from our main website, which is on AEM, uh, Adobe's Experience Manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know. Has it, there been any pressure? I mean, you, I, mean I, I got off too. on a little bit of a rant yesterday. Yeah, I yeah, started yeah. talking about the thing. And has there been any pressure to say, hey, maybe this Redshift should come over to AEM and start doing that? Well, n not really. And the reason why is because AEM's interesting. That makes it's, you sleep, like, so yeah. much better at night. <laughs> like, well, I, you know, for me, I'm like, look, it's all about, like, what value would that bring us, right? right. And, and right. if it brought value, I would totally consider it. But... Um, you know, WordPress is interesting because it's really easy. It's been around a while. There are a lot of people out there that know how to use WordPress. And that's yeah. an important thing to think about when right. you're thinking about trying to create a, a publication right. that people that's usable. Yeah. Um, you know, AEM is powerful but more complicated. And in, in some cases, we, we've had to develop our own sort of middleware to enable our marketers to actually do self-publishing on AEM. So, mm. yeah, it's, it, there hasn't been a pressure there. Um, and I, I think I'm in a good place to be able to say, hey, I'm totally willing to consider anything, but, but give me the business case here. Yeah, that's great. Yep. How about you guys? Um, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of one thing that I think we found really helpful is, you know, we try to pride ourselves on being audience first, right? Like audience first, which I think can actually apply to your stack. Uh, so what we've done, and I'm happy to share this slide with anybody who's interested, um, we have kind of a one pager on audience development. So it's essentially uh, what we call like a flyby audience who's actually seen IQ content in like an ad format, but it hasn't actually gone to the site to a first time reader, repeat reader, subscriber, and then more of like a loyalist who's, you know, if you want to use the publishing terms like recirculation uh, for sales, it would be more of a qualified lead. So, um, so what we've really done is that really drives everything from not only like our editorial, but also uh, how we use our stack. So there's obviously tools, um, for instance, like Simple Reach, we use as um, kind of our real-time dashboard. We kind of call it like our Dow Jones uh, kind of index for content because we can see exactly what, what's performing right now and, and if it's trendy, going up, going down. So it informs how we, um, how we pu publish content to social as well as promote it um, on, on different uh, native networks. Um, so th that would be an example of something where it's really helpful to kind of see how you actually generate audiences, right, and how they're coming in, like more of an acquisition play. But then, of course, you get into tools like Eloqua, right, for, for email subscribers. And then GA, um, you know, I'm sure everyone uses GA to some extent. That's where it's helpful to look at. Google Not Analytics. Not all of us. Yeah, Google Not Analytics. Not all of us. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, there yeah. You go. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, we'll get to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's be perfect. Um, but that allows you know, kind of dive a little bit deeper into like audience behaviors and like long-term yeah. trends. You know, where simple reach for us is more of like what's happening right now. Like you know, get a quick read. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's important to think about. Like if you're really trying to, you know, cultivate and develop an audience over time, how do those different tools really map to that? Um, and of course, there's like crossover, right? There's some tools that will do a lot of different stuff, but I think that's important to kind of almost look at the use case, um, you know, for that tool around like, is this going to really help drive like, uh, you know, like recirculation or you know, first-time audiences? So, um, so that's been helpful for us, I think, and helpful to share to share with our editorial team because we're not in the you know at Intel we have a whole in, you know like 12-person team, the capabilities team that's basically like they have their accounts like one person's on Eloqua, one person's on. Adobe Audience Manager, um, so um, so it's hard to kind of communicate. Well, what exactly do these tools do right. for our editorial team? Um, so that helps helps a little bit, kind of tell the story. Yeah, 
I'll just speak quickly from uh, an editorial perspective. I know you um, love technology. I do. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. it so much. Um. I mean, um, I think it's really, really easy to get overwhelmed with all the technology that's yeah. available. We have a huge tech stack that, that you know, most of us don't use well or, or, you know, it's like you have a toolkit and you always use your, your favorite screwdriver or your favorite mm -hmm. hammer, right? Yeah. And the rest of it's just sort of there in case you need it. So I feel like we, we, have, we have a lot of that. And so you, you, know, you pick what, what's useful to you. In terms of collaboration um, tools, it's, we, our whole team's on Slack um, yeah. so that we can share ideas and mm -hmm. um, you know, performance data or hey, check this out. Um, at Intel, it's so big, it's hard to um, make sure that what our team is doing is aligning with PR, is aligning with you know, our dot com team. Uh, so we we try to do cl cross collaboration slacks so mm -hmm. that people can get transparency into what we're doing and you can go back and find it again. So that's a really valuable tool for us. And then for editorial planning, we use a tool called Opal, and um, and that's really great for giving visibility to our geo partners or to anybody else that can see what's coming down the pike. So mm -hmm. those are basically our two big editorial yeah. tools that we use. On so let me just so because those were names that were thrown out really quickly here. So I just for the benefit of the audience, so you've got Opal for editorial calendar and collaboration, yep. Slack for sort of communicating with the teams and sort of running stuff and communications, real-time communications back and forth. Yep. Then you've got Google Analytics who's running your analytics system, and um, you've got Eloqua on your email side, Simple which reach. makes, Simple yeah, all right, so um, you get Eloqua <laughs> doing email, and then you've got AEM and WordPress, and you're running uh, um, uh, IQ work. off of WordPress. Yeah, yeah. 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 and okay. we're, um, yeah, we outside of Eloqua, we're, we're mainly on Adobe products. So like our our DMP is Audience Manager. Uh, we have tools like Adobe Target that we're starting to leverage a little bit more yeah. for like personalization. Um, so yeah, we're we, we're we're mainly at an Adobe stack. But I kind of joke our our stack is kind of like a leaning tower of Pisa. It's probably like <laughs> about to fall over. So. <laughs> and just and our Google so, Analytics or, or yeah, we're using GA, um, we, but we we also use. Um, uh, Adobe Analytics as well for the okay. for the main website. We're yeah. using Marketo for, for which one's right? Mar which one's correct? Well, <laughs> it depends on who you ask. Um, <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they use different language, and they, they, right. they, yeah. So it's for for like um, informing whichever um, search. whichever has the bigger numbers. Is that the <laughs> yeah, one? That's pretty right? much. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the that's yeah. the truth. Um, yeah. So yeah, our our audience development um, group, and you know, we're looking at things like GA, but. For some of like the web website uh, traffic and website experience, we're using a. Um, gotcha. Um, and we also use um, we're, we use Sprinkler for some of the distribution okay. stuff. We also use uh, Dynamic Signal for our employee advocacy, yep. which is a really big thing, especially for for Redshift. Yep. Um, yeah. So those are, there are a few more tools gotcha. that we're using. And Whitney, I I I know your technology yeah. stack, but that, but yes, and I know you have a particular fondness for that as well. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, so there's there's two sides to this. There's one, the creative enablement, all of the tools that we use to create content. And we actually have, a, I think, a good story there. Yeah. Um, and then there is the platform experience that we've had. So I mentioned we launched the Capital Ideas um, website in April of 2016. And since then, we have changed platforms twice. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm really good at, at that. If anyone needs to transition from one to another, I know what you need to do. But um, it took me a couple of times to figure it out. We started on AEM um, because that's you know that is our stack, and we I, I didn't have the experience to really know what kinds of questions I was being asked and why I was being asked them from the dev team. So that was a really frustrating experience for both my team and for the the tech team. Um, and then we transitioned over to WordPress because we did a lot of, um, you know, we made it the use case honestly to switch over to WordPress, and it was it was that it's really easy to use. Yep. Um, we could make enhancements a lot quicker because we would be going through an agency. So yep. I think we made that switch. I want to say in like June of the following. No, it must have been December of the of that year. Um, so we were on Adobe, or I'm sorry, on WordPress for about ten months, and then we switched back to AEM in November, and Robert made that cheesecake uh, factory <laughs> analogy, and I'm pretty sure that he was talking about my company. <laughs> uh, because we are, we're consolidating. We're trying to bring everything in-house, give it all one look and feel. Um, so what I did learn through this process, though, that I thought would just be an interesting tidbit is, um, and I think Kathy was sort of getting at this yesterday, too, the, the, the ability and the need to communicate with your dev team is so, is so important because 
um, understanding where they're coming from and, and having them understand where you're coming from and getting to the point where you can have a shared language facilitates that conversation so that you can actually you know, reach some of those objectives. So for instance, we, um, we had a problem with our related content algorithm and it was just returning the same four pieces of content mm -hmm. and I had to like build a spreadsheet of how I thought the algorithm should work and changes to the taxonomy so that we could get different content in there that mm -hmm. felt related. And I had to understand what um, our developer Jordan was saying when he was talking about the, you know, the stress on the load time. And we had to, we had to compromise, but we had to get to the point where we could speak the same language on that. Um, so yeah, so we're back on, a, uh, back on Adobe uh, for about five months now. Um, and I did just want to mention, because I want to end on a positive note for this, <laughs> yeah. for, for my company. Um, that we are in the process of building what we're calling a creative enablement um, suite of tools. So we're trying to get, um, you know, an, a, a calendar that it is usable by the entire company. So right now we're using Excel spreadsheets and we're using right. Post and all of these different ways of, of tracking it. And um, we're going to be rolling all of this stuff out in September. So we have a, an enterprise-wide DAM um, that's going to integrate with Adobe and we'll all be using... Um, you know, we're doing some custom built ones too. So we're trying to get to the point where we actually are, um, are using the same tools across teams so mm -hmm. that we can yep. have visibility.